All right, so this one was a highly requested video. In this one, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to contact professors for your PhD programs, or basically how to email them, you know, how to write the emails so that, you know, they'll be, they'll be interested in reading it and maybe they'll consider you for the position as well, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the template of what the letter should look like first, and then I'm gonna give you an example of, you know, how I would actually write that letter, all right? So I don't really have information in this video about how you guys can find the professors. That's a completely different story. Um, if you guys want me to make a video on that, I will. But then this one is just gonna be how you guys can write the letters, write the emails to these professors and you'll get them to read it. Professors get a ton of email all the time. So they're gonna, sp they're gonna be spending like maybe just five seconds on your, on your email, you know, just quickly skimming through, seeing, you know, if you have some relevant skills that they're looking for, if you don't understand, you know, what, they're, what work is going on in the lab and all that. All right. So you have to construct your letter in a particular way where the most impressive and the most relevant information is apparent and the rest of it, of course, if they want to find out, maybe they can check out your resume, maybe they can schedule an interview and all that. So now first, let's get to the template of what this letter should look like. Okay, so let's begin. So here there are, I'm gonna, I've color coded the information. So if it says, if it's in green, then you gotta replace it with your specific information about you know, your application. And if it's in blue, it's optional, but it's recommended that you do follow it. And if it's in bold, like I bolded it so that it's noticeable in the text, but of course it's optional up to you, but I would prefer that you bold it. Obviously don't leave the co words colored in the actual mail. I mean, this should be obvious, but I'm just stating this anyway. And yeah, finally be creative and customize a template. You don't want like, you know, everybody using the same template and stuff, right? So be creative, customize it as you see fit. All right, let's get started. So for the subject, it should be your research area. So for example, if you're applying for a mechanical engineering PhD, don't write mechanical engineering PhD, write your specific research area. And then write which intake you're planning to apply to, fall 21, fall 22, so on. And then hello, doctor, last name, doctor or mister, if, it's, if they don't have a doctorate or then, you know, last name. Um, my name is, and then your name. I'm applying to the university name for a PhD in, again, same research area. Uh, for for a particular intake, right? I came across your lab research lab name or research work on the university website. So it's very important to let them know, you know, how you got their information. So you came across their particular lab name or there may be their research work on the university website or if you came across somewhere else, that's fine too. Uh, and notice that your work aligns closely with my research background and interest. So this is important, right? This is how, this is what they base your application on or they base your decision on. Um, I later spoke to student name at the, at the lab and then learned more about the research work being conducted at the lab. So basically, you want to talk to like a student at the lab ideally so that, you know, this person, um, so that you can actually learn more about the lab and then maybe the professor can uh, sort of see that student name and be like, hey, okay, so this person's talked to us, talked to my student, I should maybe read their email and all that, all right? Then uh, given my experience with your general experience, so this is your general experience, not, not specific, but like, you know, your general experience um, about, you know, any specific topic. I'm confident I'll be able to contribute to the p research work at your lab or, lay or name you know, as a case student. I'm especially interested in the work, in your work on specific project or work. So you mentioned their specific project that they're working on or specific work. And you say, personally, I've conducted research on, this is, per this is where you talk about your work, right? So your most relevant work, obviously don't bold the entire description. This should be just like maybe two or three, four lines. Um, just bold the important parts, I guess, nothing, nothing crazy. Then uh, this part is optional. Again, you want to suggest a potential expansion of their research work that you can work on with your current skill set. So basically, what do you sort of bring to the lab? What kind of ideas do you have to take that um, work you know, further? And the knowledge from the courses you may take in the PhD program. So in some PhD programs, you can take courses and you know, build your language, build your knowledge and all that. All right. And this is one of the many possibilities I would like to explore in this area, just you know, a closing remark. Then, um, given your ex extensive research experience in the specific topic that they're researching on, I am keen on pursuing my PhD in the same topic under your guidance. I'm confident that my skills and you know, your pertinent skills, whatever skills that you have, the most relevant skills you mentioned here, will help me contribute to the research work uh, at your lab. I've attached my resume or research experience statement, which is basically like a, it's like a, it's like a document where you just talk about all the research work that you've done and then, you know, the skills that you use and the results you got and all that. Uh, research proposal, if they ask you for one, I guess, uh, links to your website. Some people have a personal website or if you have a GitHub, you can give them, link them to your GitHub. Or if you have like a research profile where, you know, someplace like where you can, where they can see all your publications, that's also a pretty good idea. Uh, and then you, you attach it to the email, right? You, you either write it down right below this paragraph or just attach it to the email. And then this is important, are you accepting students, PhD students for the particular intake? Now this is important because um, some professors will not be accepting PhD students for a particular intake. Um, and in that case, they, they just won't look at your application, right? So the most important thing is check whether they're accepting PhD students. If they're not, don't waste your time, move on. If they are, then of course, you have to you know, discuss with them. Right? If so, please let me know what time works for you best for a quick call. 
Email is fine with, with me as well. So you want to give them like an option of talking to you via email because not all professors may have the time for a call. All right, looking forward to your response. Sincerely, your full name. All right, so that is a template that you guys need to follow. Obviously, you can mix it. You can sort of um, flex. It's flexible, so you can change it up as you need to, but this is sort of the general template of how you guys need to write your letter. So that was just a template of what this letter needs to look like. So now let's look at the actual example of, you know, what an actual, you know, one of these emails could look like, all right? So before I move on, I just wanna remind you guys to subscribe to the channel because we have a ton of graduate program related information coming out every single week. So make sure you're subscribed. So now let's look at an example of a PhD application letter that I would have written. Okay, so let's say I was applying for a robotic locomotion PhD application at say Carnegie Mellon University. All right. So this is my subject, and then this is, let's say, the professor. So I would say, my name is Sajin Pullen. I'm applying to uh, Carnegie Mellon for a PhD in mechanical engineering, specifically robotic locomotion for fall 22. I, became, I came across your robo mechanics lab on the university website. Notice that your work aligns closely with my research background interests. I later spoke with John Smith, so just a random name at the, you know, the person at the lab. Learn more about the research lab of being research work being conducted at your lab. Given my experience with locomotion and odometry of robotic systems, this is, where, this is where you talk about your experience, so that they, you know, suddenly know they know immediately like, okay, this is your area of expertise. I'm confident I'll be able to contribute to the research work at the robotic robot mechanics lab as a PhD student. Right. Then you talk about the project, right? So I'm, I'm especially interested in your work on state estimation and terrain mapping with the robot Clifford. I just got it from their website. Uh, personally, I've conducted research on locomotion of a hexapod robot using ROS as the operating system. This is something I made up. Uh, the project required simultaneous communication, six, blah, blah, blah. I just talked about, I just put some random stuff about a hypothetical project, right? Just talk about your project. And in the blue part, I've basically suggested a project that I could do at the robot, at the robot mechanics lab. So. I would love to design and develop a monster that get cousin for Clifford, maybe name Marley, just for fun, right? I put like a small joke here. Uh, that would be able to sustain the state estimation terrain mapping abilities of Clifford, uh, while also offering the maneuverability advantage of hexapod and so on, right? And then you might maybe want to write one more line uh, up to you. Then I just, I changed the last line, right? So I changed it slightly. I was like, you know, this is, this is just one of the many, or it should be one of, one of the many challenging but rewarding projects I would love to work on robotics. So this just, just is something that I changed from the template. So like I said, you know, you guys should be, uh, you guys should be changing stuff, you know, to fit yourself. Uh, given your extensive uh, research experience in the, in the mechanics of robots, I'm keen on pursuing my PhD in robotic locomotion under your guidance. I'm confident that my skills on ROS and so on will help me contribute to the research work at your lab. I've attached my resume. For example, I only have a resume to give to this hypothetical application, so I put resume. And then of course, are you accepting PhD student for fall 22? And then the same thing, looking forward to your response. Sincerely, such and Pillar. All right, so that's it. So now let me show you guys what, are the, what this actually looks like in their um, inbox. So this is what the email looks like, you know, if you send it to their Outlook account, because usually these professors will have official email IDs and the official email IDs will usually be linked to Outlook. Um, so, you know, this is what it looks like, you know, robotic locomotion, this is the exact email. So this, this is sort of how it looks like, you know, on their end. Um, as you guys can see, you know, this bolded part just immediately grabs your attention. So just have bolding, you know, really smart. Um, even though the email, I know it's a little bit wordy, so if you guys want to make it shorter, you can. But um, I feel like, you know, this has like a lot of information. And of course, the bolded part, they just know immediately, okay, like you're an expert in this particular field, you've spoken to this student, and then this is your main question, are you accepting students, right? So then they just need to respond, right? So that's what the email looks like. And that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any thoughts, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, again, let me know and I'll try to respond the best as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. And finally, make sure you're subscribed. Okay, bye-bye.